Hi everybody, Diana here. Welcome to my channel. Thanks so much for joining me. <clears throat> Excuse me, today I got a little bit of a <clears throat> got a little bit of a frog in my throat. So sorry about that. So we are, of course, the home of the Build a Quilt system, where we build our quilts with our embroidery machine and only a little bit of help from our sewing machines. Um, and we're so glad to have you with us. And my question to you has is: Have you ever wondered? why scissors matter as a quilter? Well, if you have, that's good. <laughs> if you haven't though, that's what we're gonna talk about today. Stick around with me um, for more information. Now here at Sew in Common, like I said, we are home of Build a Quilt Patchwork in the Hoop. We have lots of free patterns over at our website, sewincommon.com, so grab those. Even this one behind me, the Inspired Star, that's our October um, quilt pink uh, star that we chose. The star is actually back from a free block of the month in April, but we chose to use it for our quilt pink for Breast Cancer Awareness Month as well. So <clears throat> go ahead and grab that one or any of our other free uh, patterns or even our uh, Build a Quilt system um, in the hoop basic block set one. Um, that set is for purchase and you can make tons of quilts um, that you might love, the patterns that you might have seen with that particular set. Alrighty, so let's get to why scissors matter. So first let's talk for a second about brand. I have two different scissors here. I grabbed two out of my collection and believe me, I have a ton of scissors. Um, but I have settled over the years, and remember I've been quilting over 55 years, for a, a pair that I think work the best. And while over these years, as I've been looking and trying to figure out which ones I think are best, I also did some research on why scissors matter, why the type of scissor matter, especially for us quilters. And um, you all know that um, in my former life, my former career, I was a scientist. So, you know, doing that kind of research kind of gets me going in the morning while I'm drinking my cup of coffee. <laughs> so let's talk about, again, brand. Does the brand matter? Does it matter that this is a name brand and this is a name brand? And let me grab another pair over here. This pair right here is not a name brand. Does it matter? Maybe, maybe not. Um, probably not in um, why the scissor over type of scissor overall matters. But I can say that sometimes, like with everything in life, you can get what you pay for. So if you see a pair of scissors and they're five dollars, you might be getting a five dollar scissor, and it might not be the best scissor for your quilting life. It might be a great scissor for opening up the packages that come from Amazon. <laughs> I'm serious. I mean, you know, those kinds you get at the dollar store, I've got them all over the house. People can cut whatever they want with them because they know, of course, the number one rule is you don't cut with my quilting scissors. As quilters or sewers, um, we know that these scissors only touch fabric. There's kind of a reason for that. Um, that is because cutting other things can nick and mar the blades, causing them to have to be sharpened, that sort of thing. It can dull them so you're not getting a good cut on your fabric, that sort of thing. But um, a $5 scissor might just be a $5 scissor, and it might not be something that you want in your quilting room. Um, then again, you might find a pair of scissors on sale for $5, and you know, oh my gosh, that brand, that particular st style scissor is the best scissor they ever made in this world. And you can get it for $5 and grab it because then you're probably getting like, you know, a $30 scissor for $5. You know, we always like a good bargain, right? So brand, brand, maybe, maybe not. Okay. It, it can depend. I, I have a pair of scissors that were only like $10. And they work great for what I use them for in my sewing room, in my quilting room. But what really matters, now there can be a few things. One thing is your grip, okay? 
I'm a lefty. So these scissors that are made for righties, I still use them when I cut my fabric, but I'm cutting in the wrong direction. And people that tell you, oh, lefties, just, you can still use them. It's a, yeah, you can still cut with them, but you're not using them properly, especially if you use something called a duckbill scissor in applique that trims around your applique. It is very important that if you're a lefty, that you use a lefty scissor. That's a whole nother video, which I can do for us sometime. Um, but the grip can really matter. These are metal scissor. They're not overly heavy, but they're certainly not super lightweight. The grip in here is quite small, but I can get my fingers in them and I can do, you know, I can get them to rest on my finger and all, but they're a little with metal. I feel like, especially as a lefty, I'm always trying to press. My finger's always doing something to try and get these to press together properly. That's really bad for my hands. And I've had carpal tunnel surgery on both hands. So you want to make sure you get a grip that is comfortable and a grip that is, at, or a scissor that's made either for your left handedness or your right handedness. Now, this scissor that you see here. Let's look at this grip. It's symmetrical, right? It's the same. There we go. Um, there we go. It's the same on both sides. And I love it. Now, it's squishy on the outside. And you might say, well, why does that matter? Well, one, I can get more fingers in here. But the squishy on the outside is not really so much of a big deal, right? But this cover on him on them, even though it's not squishy here in the middle, this part is metal, it makes it softer. It makes this part, the squishy part on the outside, actually does make it softer on my fingers through here. So I'm not liable to get marks on here like I might with a metal scissor. So a grip can be very important. But the thing that makes your scissor matter most is Will it start the dreaded fraying of your fabric? Now, some of you are going to go, whoa, that just went off in a whole different direction, right? Believe me, scissors matter because they can be the very beginning of fabric fraying. Now, some fabric, because of the weave, and if it's a looser weave, you look at it and it goes, ah, it just starts to fray. Um, and in that case, there's probably not much you're going to do to keep that from happening. Excuse me. You don't mind if I take a little drink now and again of my coffee, do you? Helps keep my throat clear. Um, so scissors, though, can be what starts your fabric to fray. And that is because of the type of blade they have. So let's think about what's happening when we cut our fabric. When you, my hands, the fabric, my fingers are the scissors. When you cut, do you know when you have to do this a lot, right? When you're scissoring a lot across your fabric, one, your blades might be super dull. If that's the case and they're sharpenable, and even if you have scissors you don't think can be sharpened, Take them to a sharpener because let the professional tell you a lot of times they can still sharpen. They've got gadgets and gizmos aplenty, as that song goes in The Little Mermaid, and they can probably sharpen them for you. I've taken scissors there that I thought, oh, these are never going to be able to be sharp. And sure enough, they've been able to be sharpened. So it could be your blade is dull. But a lot of times, especially with metal uh, scissors, that the whole thing is all metal through here there's a screw here. If that screw is loose, it can make your blades separate a little bit. And if they're separating, they're not working properly when they do this. So they're not cutting, they're not giving you a proper cut. They're kind of bending your fabric and then, and then cutting. And what's happening there is if your blade isn't properly sharpened or it's separated a little bit, What's happening is it's pulling on the fabric of the fiber or the fiber of the fabric. 
okay? So it's every time it pulls on that little fibers and cuts it, it's pulling it a little bit out of shape. And that's what starts the fabric to fray, especially with some of our better quilting cottons nowadays. They're made so well. They're made like, you know, like really good quality high thread count sheets practically. And you don't want them to fray and they fray not very much to start with. But if you use the wrong scissor, you're going to get fraying. And then fraying is going to lead to having problems getting seams lined up, all that kind of thing. Okay. So I want to show you another scissor. I'm going to bring this one back up here again. There's something very special about the blades of these scissors. And it is they have what's called a micro serration. Now you really can't see it because it is micro, but when I tilt it there, you can see that the the edge of the blade and the blade itself look a little different. There's this micro serration. What does that do? What's that good for? A micro serration gives you a crisp cut. Look, completely crisp, all in one go. I didn't have to double cut or anything like that. That micro serration makes sure that every time it comes in contact with the fiber, it's cutting it. It's not pulling it. It's not bending it. It's cutting it. And so you get the crispest, cleanest cut with scissors with micro serration. Now, let me show you an example. Here is, so I had this fabric. I cut a piece off this end and a piece off this end. This end, you can see, this is the edge that was professionally cut on the bolt. This, see where my fraying is? It's starting up in here. Let's see, can you see better if I do that? You can see the fraying and the little hairs these scissors, these $69 scissors, these one of the best brand German scissors in the world. These scissors that have a pretty good, have a pretty good sharpen on the blade. They're not ready to be, to be cut yet or to be sharpened yet. Oh boy. Look at all that fraying I have to deal with. And you know that once this starts, if I pull this, it's just going to start another another bit of fraying. Now, it could be that these are separated a little bit in here. I don't think so. Well, no, there, there's a tiny bit of a looseness there. I can feel it. I know you can't really see it, but I can feel it. There's a kind of bit of wiggle room here. So it could be that these should be tightened. That might fix the problem. But I want you to look at the ones that I cut with these scissors with the micro serrated blade. Okay. I have to remember which side I took these off. Yes. Okay. This is the manufacturer side cut. No, whoops, I'm wrong because it's backwards in the, this is the manufacturer cut clean as a whistle. This is the cut with these scissors. That's the difference that micro serrated blades can make for you. Okay. Now these scissors are seven years old. These scissors are seven years old. I've used these less than I've used these because when I found these, I realized it was the perfect cut. And for quilters, because we cut so much of our fabric with our rotary cutters, you don't necessarily need big shears for cutting large pieces of fabric. Like when we garment sew and we're cutting out patterns, usually a longer blade works better for that. But for quilting, basically we're going to do some small cuts. We're going to do a little trimming. We're going to cut thread a lot. So this shorter blade is perfect. And for quilters, a blade longer than that is really kind of overkill, okay? 
Um, but these also have a really super sharp tip. So I can get right up. Let's just say this was a fold and I needed to cut right here. Look, I can cut just, let me make sure, let me look at it, make sure I've got it on. Ah, there we go. Um, I can, because that tip is so small, look. Now let's look. Whoops, there's my, there's my cut. Do you see it? Maybe you'll see it better on this side. There's the cut. There's the cut right there where my fingernail is. See? Do you see it? That's because I can cut with the point of these. That doesn't happen with these. I've got one sharp point, but this one is different. So when I go to cut these, I have to get in here a good half an inch or so. That might be too big of a cut. So these work great, only the serration, but this point as well. So that's why it matters for your scissors, really. You're going to get a more accurate cut because I can get all the way just that little bit on the tip, but the serration of the blade is going to keep my fabric from starting to fray. I actually have several pairs of these. I keep one here at this embroidery machine, at that embroidery machine, at my sewing machine, and at my cutting table because I don't, I don't want to be running around. And I have one for my travel bag too, excuse me, excuse my, um, because I don't want to, um, I, I don't ever want to be without them. Now, does the brand matter in this? I think this is a $24 scissor, $69 scissor. Never use these anymore, really. Only actually keep these at my sewing table in a cup just to remind me that I have them if I ever need a spare pair. Um, and I do something really bad. If somebody comes over to stitch with me and they need scissors, I give them these. I know, I'm rotten, right? Um, but these are worth every penny to me. Now, this brand is Karen K. Buckley. I am not affiliated with Karen K. Buckley in any way. Um, so I'm sorry, I don't like have a coupon or anything for you, but I don't, I'm not affiliated with her. But her scissors for quilters, in my opinion, are the best on the market. She has different blade, there are different blade sizes. There's a really tiny one, this one, but I love it, but all it's really good for is cutting thread. So if you want one right at your machine to snip your threads, this would be great. But this one will do that and more for you. There's also longer bladed ones, um, which I do have. And I like to cut my pattern fabric um, when I'm cu cutting for garments. I like to use those for that, when I, especially when I'm designing costumes for theater and stuff like that. I like to do that. But these are just, in fact, I think, aren't these called the perfect scissor or something like that? I think so. Um, they are truly the perfect scissor. Are there other micro serrated bladed scissors on the market? Yes, I believe now there are. I don't have any to show you, um, but I know I've seen some here and there. So you could certainly do a little investigation on that. But my thought is just grab yourself a pair of these. If you, especially if you are new to quilting and you're saying, I want to get my quilting supplies in order and you know you need scissors, just don't waste your time or money on anything else. Just get yourself a pair of these. They'll last you. They'll work. I've never had to. Now, as these are micro serrated, I don't know if they can be sharpened. I've not talked to my sharpening guy about this, but after seven years, this pair cuts as good today as it did the day I took it out of the box. And there's one more thing. Can I? Uh, okay, I'll show you with these. She always gives you, or this brand always gives you this cap on here. For goodness sakes, when you're not using the scissor, use the cap. Why? Can you imagine that going right through your hand if you accidentally, if it was pointing up and you went, ah, ah, that's a trip to the ER, right? The other thing is, yeah, these aren't overly expensive scissors, but you have spent good money on them and you want to keep them in the, the, the big thing is you want to keep them in the best shape possible. Do that. If you're something, if a tool comes with a cap or a cover, 
for goodness sake, use it. It's there to help keep your tools in good shape and to keep you from having to buy lots, rebuy them lots of times. So I have like six pairs of these and six caps stay on them all the time. Now I'm currently using mine. That's why I don't have my cap right here with me. But when I put them away, I put that cap on them. So because after seven years, I haven't noticed any difference in how these cut and you just, you saw this cut that I just did right as I was starting the video. I don't suspect I'll need to think about sharpening them. And if they go another seven or 10 years and then they start getting dull, then I'll find out if I need to sharpen them. If I get 20 years out of scissors before I need to sharpen them, whoo, yes, absolutely. We love that. So anyway, your scissors do matter, folks. It really matters because it'll help keep your fabric from fraying. Um, also, you know, it's just like with the knives in our kitchen, sharp scissors mean less injuries to you. Believe it or not, it's true. I have, while cutting, cut right through. Everybody has this little part of your hand right here, right? I've cut myself with that, with these really sharp, got in there. But the sharp, <laughs> the cut was so clean, I put a little, cleaned it up, put a little ointment on there and a band-aid and it was healed up in a day. If I had done that with this, I would have gotten a really dug in cut. I don't even know that I could. Well, yeah, I could cut. We won't, <laughs> we won't put that to the test. But it's better to have a sharper scissor than a duller scissor always. Okay. So my, uh, my final word to you is get yourself a good pair of micro serrated scissor. These ones by Karen K Buckley, I'll link them below, um, so that you can find them. Um, I think you can get them through Amazon. If that's the case, I'll link it below. Um, otherwise, look at your local uh, fabric shop, quilting shop retailer. So many people carry these today, but they really are the best. And you will be having fabric that is beautifully cut like here and no fraying like there. Look at that. We don't like fraying. Say no to fraying. Okay. So I hope that helped everybody. Um, I know I, I briefly touch on that from time to time, but some people wanted to know more. And I thought, why not do this video and show you all about um, why scissors matter? Okay, everybody, have a great day. Um, if you need to get a hold of me, please uh, do so in the comments, or you can contact me at support at sewingcommon.com. Again, our patterns and blog, everything is over at the website, sewingcommon.com. And more than anything, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, would you please subscribe? We'd love to have you. There's always more room here at Sew in Common for more folks that love to sew and quilt. And I'd love to have you join us. Click the little bell for notifications. And please, like the video and share it. That means a great deal to me. And it means a great deal apparently to YouTube as well. And they will push the videos out more so more people can see them. So if you would click the like and, and share the video, I certainly would appreciate it as well. But I'd really love to have you as part of Sew in Common family. Until next time, everybody. Remember, good scissors matter and sew life beautiful. Bye for now.